This is NewCap News with Nicole Stilger. Well, Lloydminster City Council is taking a pay cut amidst an attempt to balance the budget by January, an issue brought up during the election campaign. The motion of a deferred pay system was brought forward by Councillor Stephanie Brown Monroe after other arms of the city decided to reduce pay. City union staff in a collective agreement stepped up to the plate and offered up that 2%. I thank them very much. Administration staff, out of scope staff, offered up a 2% reduction. It was behooved on us to step up and take a 2% pay cut. So I think that, that's being fair to everybody. Under the system, 2% of pay will be deferred in 2017 and 2018 to be used when employees are on leave. City councillors make just under $32,000, while the mayor makes $90,000 annually. The savings expected to be generated by the cut is just over $5,000. Well, the newspaper landscape in the border city is going to see some change. The Lloydminster source has purchased the Meridian Booster from Post Media. Almost a year ago, uh, you know, that uh, we thought that uh, with, with the downturn and everything and everybody was hurting a little more, we thought that it might be a, an avenue that we wished to pursue. And uh, so he uh, made contact with Post Media and... The deal to purchase the paper was finalized last week. According to the source, the papers will remain separate entities with the advertising and accounting done here in Lloydminster rather than out east. As for distribution, readers may not see much of a change. I would think that you'll see the booster, you know, uh, almost uh, be the carbon copy uh, distribution of, uh, of the source in the rural areas. The, uh, in the city, uh, it's not going to change really at all. It might be a little tweaking here and there, but uh, for the most part, uh, we're both audited and uh, we'll try to maintain those numbers and if not, increase them. The purchase of the booster also brings the paper back into the family. The source's publisher, Reed Kiba's father, founded the booster and Meridian Printing back in 1958. The seasonal crackdown on impaired driving is now underway in the border city. Lloydminster RCMP City Bylaw and Mayor Gerald Albers kicked off the Check Stop campaign, a reminder to drivers to be responsible this time of year. It's that time of season that people sometimes take that extra drink and uh, we're trying to send a very clear message that please do not drink and drive and that there are alternatives. It's a message the RCMP hopes is always taken seriously, but says is highlighted around the holidays. I think more people are aware of uh, around Christmas time, so they take those extra steps. It's just that hopefully those lessons they learn at this time of year, they use during the rest of the year. Like impaired driving, of course, is a concern to all uh, citizens of, of Canada, and especially uh, the RCMP. It's a national uh, priority. As part of the kickoff, candy canes were handed out to compliant drivers and passengers. Now, you just heard from Inspector Neil Pearson. He's the Lloydminster RCMP's new detachment commander. He assumed his new role just this past Monday, but is no stranger to the border city. I really uh, enjoy being back uh, in town. Uh, if you were, I was posted here uh, 95, 96 as a constable. So uh, it's really uh, great to be back in the town. It's grown a little bit since I was here, um, but it's a really uh, a good detachment. Uh, lots of good people, uh, very supportive uh, community and I'm uh, uh, just really happy to be here and uh, new duties. So. Well, the annual Jail and Bail fundraiser is currently on at the Lloydminster SPCA, and this year, more than 30 community members have gone behind bars to raise awareness and support for the shelter, and that's where we find our Brian Lentz tonight. Brian, just under an hour to go. That's right, Nicole. We're getting down to the 11th hour here at the SPCA. Now I'm joined with Dana Crawford. We've busted her temporarily out of jail. Uh, she's the owner of Groomer Has It. Now, Dana, how have things been going so far? I think they've been going wonderful. I've already beat my goal this year. I made way less last year, so this is a good time for me and my cellmate that I happen to have dressed up like me. So you've posted bail is what you're saying? Yes, I have. And I can leave whenever I want to, but I probably won't. <laughs> All right. So you're going to stick around right until the seventh hour there. And then, so you're a, you know, you own Groomer Has It and you're a pet owner yourself. When you see some of the pets that are in here, how, you know, how important is it to, uh, to support the SPCA and the work that they do? Oh, it's so important. They've been with us in Lloydminster for the longest and they 
need the community to come together more than ever to help support them now that there's all kinds of rescues in the area. And this type of facility needs a lot to keep going. And the money that we raise here goes for a good cause. Well, thank you very much, Dana. So remember, we have just an hour, un just under an hour left. So be sure to come by the SPCA to donate in person, or you can donate over the phone or also online. So keep those donations coming in. Back to you, Nicole. All right, Brian, thank you so much. That's Brian reporting live from the Lloydminster SPCA. While children at the Stollery Hospital in Edmonton will sleep a little easier after another successful delivery of pajamas from a local teen. After just a few months of collecting donations, Project PJ creator Olivia Brokoff and her parents delivered more than 1,200 pairs of new pajamas. We had maybe 20, 30 big boxes in the back of a trailer, and they were heavy, so they were packed full. We had to tape them down. It was awesome. Olivia adds she will continue the fundraiser for as long as she can. I like it. I like knowing other people will get to feel more welcome and comfortable, and I like knowing they'll be more happy. The teen is already well on her way to next year's goal as more pajamas continue to arrive. While the frantic pace of preparing for Christmas can bring on stress during a time where people are hoping for the opposite. But one of the ways you can cope with the hectic nature of the season is through coloring books. In this week's Healthy Living, Josh Ryan looks at how being creative can help your mental health during the holidays. Upon reaching adulthood, there are a number of activities people leave behind, such as coloring. But over the past couple of years, adult coloring books have become a growing trend as some are among the best sellers on Amazon. It was always thought to be something just young people did, or, you know, or for kids. But now grandmas are coming in buying them, grandpas are, you know, there's one for everybody. A number of recent studies show that artistic activities like coloring can help people reduce stress and anxiety levels, improve the ability to focus, and spur creativity. That's something perfect for this busy time of the year. You're running around, you're stressed, it's crazy, you know, everywhere and it's just nice to come home and sit and pull out a coloring book and color. There's a variety of options for adult coloring fans. Basic designs to specific pop culture products, to classic images of tranquility and some less frequently associated with relaxation. There's your flowers and you know birds and animals and then you know the ones that get a little kind of tongue-in-cheek I might say. And even for those who don't have trouble relaxing it can still provide some fun. Just kind of sort of drift and color and relax. Josh Ryan, New Cap News. Well, bringing in a single champion animal is one thing. Winning overall with a cow-calf pair speaks volumes for any program. In this week's Agriculture Report, Gerard Lampow introduces us to Twisted Sisters. Well, I like showing cattle a lot. I want to do that for the rest of my life, so... Brianna Kimmel lives in Lloydminster. Her sister Megan Hoffman lives in Kansas with her husband and stepdaughter. In the last three years, they have been operating as Twisted Sisters Livestock, buying, breeding, and showing cattle. At this year's aggribition in Regina, Twisted Sisters snagged Grand Champion First Lady Classic Futurity. Man, we had an amazing year. I just, we, with our Simtals, with the ones that, one that we bought with Halls, she's a stellar Color bread heifer that's going to make an awesome cow. And uh, PA, we were supreme champion female, which so we won all the females. And then Lloyd, we were grand champion female in the Angus division. And then in Cement, at the Young Ranchmans, we got grand champion Semental. Um, Agribition, we we're in the top 10 for her, the supreme, and same with the RBC uh, supreme. That's an impressive list of result-oriented work for the 17-year-old Lloyd Comp grade 12 student, not to mention winning a cow-calf pair with 10-month-old Heartbreaker and her mom, 1,800 pounds, Pearl. Brianna is one of the seniors in the Lashburn 4-H program, but her ringside manner and beef genetics have only developed in the last three years. When we go to shows, we learn more than what... We learn a different side of education. We learn social skills, family skills learning about everything else and the real world, really. Another challenge for Twisted Sisters Livestock is the long-distance coordination. With us down here, we can 
we see a lot of them bulls and we can tell my folks what's you know what's working and what's not and what will be good on our cows and and same with them with what's being used up there and how it's working on cows up there. If we want to buy cattle then we kind of communicate on which ones we pick out in sales and see which ones we like the best. Brianna plans to do crop technology at Lakeland College next year as she broadens her agriculture horizon and she shared with me some of her bovine beauty tips. And when you get below here now. Come down. Gerard Lampau, Newcap News. Well, Lloydminster Minor Hockey is always developing initiatives to make its on-ice product better. Lance Phillips has more on another program designed to not only help players, but the game itself. Being a hockey official, well, it isn't easy. Ask anyone who's blown the whistle and they'll tell you thousands of hours are needed to hone the craft. However, to become an official in Alberta, a one-day clinic is all that's required before you're calling games. And this is an issue Lloydminster Minor Hockey's tackling head-on with its referee mentorship program. We felt we were doing a disservice by just turning kids loose. So we wanted to properly develop kids and show them that they have a future in hockey from an official standpoint because it's expected from the, the very first date after the clinic that our guys are experts in the field of officiating. When you could talk to any AJHL, WHL, NHL official that they're not experts in their field either. For three years, Lloyd Minor Hockey's been helping youth become better officials. Once a month, the mentorship program gives both on and off ice instruction and the reactions are definitely positive. I think they like it just from the fact that they have support. I enjoy coming out to watch the little kids and helping make a difference in the community. It used to be about learning the game and now it's like, it's something that's actually fun, keeps me active and it's about helping out the little kids now too. So what is it about this program that keeps young officials coming back? You have a good community of guys and girls around you that want to help you become a better official. It helps a lot because you get more ice time and better feedback and you get to work with the senior guys which is a lot better. That's where having these clinics really, we're promoting kids doing a higher level of hockey a lot sooner than we were even four years ago. One of the most difficult situations facing any official aren't necessarily the players on the ice but rather the parents in the stands. And for these young officials learning to be their best for other young hockey players, maybe, just maybe, parents enjoying the sport up here will be a little more lenient on the people wearing the stripes down there. Lance Phillips, New Cap Sports, Lloydminster. Well, this year, Bonneville was selected to host the World Junior 8 Challenge, where teams from Russia, Switzerland, Czech Republic, USA, Canada West, and Canada East come together and compete for a gold medal. But as Bailey Nitty explains, the tournament has also brought the community together and made an economic impact as well. It's the second time the World Junior 8 Challenge has been hosted in Alberta. The city of Bonneville says it's proud they get the chance to play a role in developing young athletes. The feeling's been tremendous to, to see this building full and uh, just the, the people talking about it around town. I know the weather's cold, but uh, it's been heartwarming to, to see what uh, this community has done to come together and really support this event. Uh. Not only has the tournament helped the community of Bonneville and surrounding areas to come together, but the economic boost it brings is one they're grateful for. Oh, it's huge. I mean, it's bringing a lot of money. Of course, exposure is great for the town. It's a great community. Uh, it seems like it's a very solid volunteer base. A time when it was needed in the community because of the oil downturn, so it's, it's given the community some life and uh, brought a lot of, of revenue into the community. After submitting a bid package to Hockey Canada and making sure they had all the credentials to host a major tournament, Bonneville was awarded the Games. It's not only the biggest thing that's ever happened north of Alberta here, but certainly in our town of Bonneville, we're passionate, uh, we're a community that does things right, we're a community that wants to make a, an impact. Bailey Nitty, Newcap Sports. And the Midwest region has another young hockey player about to make his mark on the world stage. Hockey Canada named the 22 players that will represent the country at the IIHF World Junior Championship and among them is Lloydminster native Kale Clegg. The Brandon Wheat Kings defenseman was selected in the second round of the 2016 NHL draft by the Los Angeles Kings. 
The 18-year-old has 19 points in 22 games this season with Brandon. The 2017 World Junior Championship begins December 26th in Montreal and Toronto.